Triple EDs. Welcome to the captivating world of technology, where lights meets innovation. LEDs stands for light emitting diodes. These have revolutionized the way we illuminate our world. Through meticulous programming and designs, LED animations bring spaces to life, captivated audiences, and evoke emotions. But how are these beautiful displays made? What is the science behind it? Today, we explore LEDs, one of the best innovations of the modern technology. This is Max Ajo, and this video is about LEDs. Light Emitting Diode our previous video we talked about diode, do watch it out. Lighting in late 1800s was majorly revolutionized by a scientist called Thomas Edison. In 1879, Thomas Edison managed to provide a long-lasting light through his innovations about the incandescent bulbs. Incandescent bulbs worked through the principle of heat emission by the filament which glow to produce light. This was one of the best innovations ever, but it had some small drawbacks, very high power consumption. Also, its lifespan was not very long. And of course, the production of different color as we want was not easier. These drawbacks were cut short by Nick Holignac Jr. Experiments about LEDs, which was power efficient longer lifespan, and we can proudly produce any color we wish to produce. This is LED and its parts contains epoxy lens or case. This epoxy lens or case protect the delicate internal components of the LED from environmental factors such as moisture, dust, and physical damage. It also helps to focus and direct the light emitted by the LED. Another part is wire band. It provides the electrical connection for the LED to function. This one is reflection cavity. It is designed to enhance the efficiency of light extraction from the LED. It reflects photons that would otherwise be trapped inside the LED back towards the emitting surface increasing the overall light output. Semiconductor Diode This allows current to flow in one direction, which causes electrons holes, resulting in the emission of photons and production of light. Anvil and Post are structural components that help to support the LED chip and provide mechanical stability of the LED package. Flat spot. The flat spot on the LED package serves as a reference point for proper orientation during installation. It indicates the location of the cathode, negative terminal, of the LED. This usually helps when the LED terminals are broken to equal height. Anode and cathode are electrical terminals of the LED. The anode is the positive terminal connected to P-type semiconductor, while the cathode is the negative terminal connected to N-type. Now, when we apply voltage across the anode and cathode, current flow through the LED, resulting to the emission of light. But how? Where are these photons comes? This is through spontaneous emissions of photons within materials such as semiconductor. In the context of LED, photons are generated when electrons recombine with the electrons holes in the semiconductor material. This is how. When an external voltage is applied to the LED, Electrons within the semiconductor material absorb energy and become excited, moving to a higher energy levels. As electrons move to higher energy levels, they leave behind electron holes in the lower energy level of the semiconductor material. These electrons hole pairs are essential for the generation of photons. Since 
once the excited electrons lose energy and return to lower energy level in the form of photons. The energy released during recombination appears as light or photons, with a specific wavelength determined by the energy bandgap of the semiconductor material. I know it's quite confusing. Let me explain further in a simpler way. In our previous video on diodes, I said diodes n-type has one extra electron in it orbital, which is free to move when excited when we apply the voltage. This voltage provides electrons, which causes the electrons in n-type to gain potential energy. Remember, this potential energy is caused by the incoming electrons, which pushes these electrons in the n-type. When these electrons gain the potential energy, they have gained more energy than the initial, hence move the A higher energy level, which may also be called conduction band. Upon these electrons jumping to P-type, they found that holes with lower energy, hence for them to adapt to these holes energy, they released the energy they had, and these raised energy are in terms of photons. We also consider that the electrons recombine with the holes. These photons are elementary particles that constitute light. They have no mass, travel at the speed of light and carry electromagnetic radiation. These electromagnetic radiation has wavelength such as gamma rays, X-rays, microwave, radio waves, and even visible light. Quantum mechanics describes photons as both particles and waves, hence exhibit properties of both. These photons plays a fundamental role in various phenomena, including the photoelectric effect, where they eject electrons from a material and in the transmission energy across a space. The visible light wavelength once achieved made LED the modern lighting technology. Nick Holonyak Jr., an American engineer, in 1962 while working on his experiments, he developed the first practical visible spectrum, LED, by combining semiconductor alloy of gallium arsenide fisfide to create a red light. With further experiments by scientists, red lead is produced by alloy of aluminium gallium indium phosphide. Then green light was achieved by either alloy of gallium phosphide or gallium nitride to emit green light. One of the things that truly gave life to LEDs was the invention of blue light. This was achieved by alloy of indium gallium nitride to emit blue light. With these three RGB lights, it was possible to produce any light, including white. Once wit was achieved, it became modern home lighting solutions. These experiments also help us to know the wavelength of every visible light we have. Using the formula, lambda equals to H times C all over E. Where lambda is wavelength, H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light in vacuum, and E is band gap, energy, EV converted in joules. For example, combining gallium and arsenic, wavelength would be 800 zentendabinam using the formula above. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, kindly subscribe, share, and like. Also, anyone who has an extra laptop and can assist me with one, I have experienced a PC failure. And anyone who is willing to help me, I will be very appreciative. My email is in the description of every video in this channel, including this video. See you in the next one.